Good evening, Start Baptist Church family and Start community. Welcome to our Sunday night Bible study, Family Matters. Tonight we're going to be talking about the woman God created. We're going to look at the role of the woman. We're going to look at her role as possibly a wife, possibly a mother, according to God's word. Last week, Brother Andy and Brother Jeremy helped us understand the definition and the description of the man who could be a husband, who could also be a father. We know that we, uh, as men and women, are created equally by God, but we're also created with differences. The husband is created by God to lead the family, to lead with love, care, provision, and protection. His love should be active, and most importantly, it should be sacrificial. His love should model the love of Jesus, the love Jesus had for His church, A father is created by God to instruct his children in that same love, patiently bringing them up to fear the Lord and to serve Him fully. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I think each one of us, we're a little nervous about this session. Absolutely. I don't know that we're fully qualified to teach about the woman God created, about the the role of a wife or the role of a mother But we are going to focus on the scriptures and we pray that God would lead us all to understand better the role of the woman in our world today. The role of the wife in the home. The role of the mother in the home. So that leads us to a very important question that we want to answer with scripture tonight. And that is, how is the woman defined and described by God? So that's a, that's a great question that we're going to dig into. And we're going to start in the same place that we started last week with the man in Genesis. And uh, just as the man had a beginning, the woman had a beginning as well. And uh, we talked a little bit last week about them being created equal. And I think that's very fitting that Genesis is the starting point for both because they were created equal. So let's start here. Woman is created in the image of God as a suitable helper. Now, Mm -hmm. that word helper can have a negative connotation. And before we start looking at it too deeply, before you go off on the negative side, uh, let's look at what Scripture actually says about it. So we're going to be looking in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, starting in verse 19. And here's what it says, starting in verse 19. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. So uh, I find it really neat that God created everything from the dust except for the woman. Right. Mm-hmm. And he created her from the rib of a man. So this is, uh, this is a very unique thing here. Mm-hmm. So the Hebrew term for helper is actually a word that means meat and power. Mm-hmm. Another word that's important in this passage is the word suitable. So in all of creation, all of these things God created, he looked And found no suitable helper for the man. So in order to create a suitable helper, he opened the man and took a rib from the man. And in all of the the things that he created, nothing was suitable except for the woman. The woman was suitable. So Dr. David Jeremiah has a quote, and here's what he says. The woman was his help, his help meet. Mm. One who supplies certain strengths that Adam lacks. This does not imply that the helper is weak, weaker, or less than the one who is helped. In fact, the woman is a power that matches the man perfectly. Mm -hmm. So a help meet, you look at the strengths of the man and the strengths of the woman, and when you put them together, they perfectly complement each other. And that's what Dr. David Jeremiah is saying here, that she is the perfect fit for the man, not because of her weaknesses, but because of the man's weaknesses. So when we embrace our purpose, we can actually put those two things together. And when we put it together, it's so powerful, and it serves to glorify God. So in a secular context, 
you can make the position of a helper as menial or unimportant. Almost, like I was saying before, it can be taken as a negative connotation. And so many times it is. People want to think of the helper as the sidekick. So when you think of superheroes, they all have a helper. And we call them the sidekick. But they're always portrayed as lesser than the hero. But the truth is, the hero needed the sidekick. Mm. (laughs) So the truth is, the helper is just as important of a role as the man. So the woman is created to complement the man in every way. I think that's why, Brother Andy, we, we've, got to, we've got to look at the Bible and trust what the Bible says uh, when, we, when we talk about the role of the man and the role of the woman. We've got to look at the context of the Bible because it is very easy yeah. to, to take it out of context, mm-hmm. to, to have a worldly mindset yeah. of what a man is, a worldly mindset of what a woman is. That's why it's so important to know what God's Word says and stay in the context Yeah, of the that's Bible. right. And using the context, you, you do find that God's not saying the woman is less. Right. That's right. God is saying that the woman is equal, yes. but her strengths complement the man's weaknesses. That's right. So let's look at the Holman Bible Dictionary and let's define helper. And here's what it says. A helper is one who provides what is lacking mm. in another. One who can do what another cannot do alone. So a helper is only needed if there's lacking, if something is lacking. So the helper can't do something alone. And therefore a helper, I mean, the helper is provided for the person who cannot do something alone. Right, and in right. this case, we're talking about the man cannot do it alone. That's and right. God provides the helper. So the helper is provided because we lack what we need to be complete. And just because the woman is described as a suitable helper doesn't mean that she's less. It doesn't. God made her in his image. Mm. Just like he made man in in his image, he also made woman in his image. In all of creation, there was nothing like Adam. But now, there's a woman. So men, if we disrespect women in the way... If we disrespect women in the way God created her, then we disrespect God. That's right. That's right. And we'll never be able to be who God created us to be. So we're going to look at another definition uh, and description. um, and, And using what we've just learned about the woman not being less than the man, but the woman being the helper, the, the complement to everything that, that is a weakness to the man. We're going to talk about them as a couple. And we're going to talk about their role as the wife. So I'm going to ask Brother Jeremy this question. So what is the role of a wife? Well, I think, you know, first off, we got to talk about what Brother Jeff said, making sure that we're looking at the Bible, we look at it correctly. Mm-hmm. Then also we have to look and be really careful that we're not listening to the wrong people, right. that we're not listening, uh, you know, in the wrong places. We're not listening to the, what the world says, what the world defi- how the world defines a wife. I mean, you think about we have social media yeah. today that, that tells us, you know, what, who they think women should be and, and who they think a wife should be and, and all that. I mean, you know, not just social media, but TV, even books. Yeah. I mean, even reading books, you, you have all these ideas that people, you know, come up with and, and, and you think of a wife, you think of certain roles, but we need to look at the one book yeah. that has the answers. The one book that matters. The one book that matters, and that's the Bible, and, yeah. and see exactly what it means to be the wife, okay? And so it says in, here in, in the marriage, the wife teams with her husband mm. to be who God created them be, to be together. Wow. And that's powerful. That, that goes back to what Andy was saying in that God created them equal and to pair together, yes. to complement each other. Where one has a weakness, the other one is strength. And we're going to look at Ephesians uh, chapter 5, starting in verse 21, uh, going through 24. It says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So right off the bat, it's submit to one another. Right. Okay, so right. They're, they're, the husbands, you're in that too. That's right. Okay? Then 22, it says, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Hmm. Now, we're, we're going to take a step back and really dive into this and really you know, look hard at these scriptures. Because if you think about it right off the bat, 
a spirit-filled Christ follower will walk in submission. That's right. So that's all of us. That's right. That's right off that. That's all of us. And all the, Christ and, followers will walk in word, submission. That word submission is another word that has a negative ne- connotation that's right. it, in our it, world today. It does. Right? But in the Bible, it is not a negative word. That's right. And 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 Pastor Tony Morita, he brings this out. He says, before speaking of submission in marital, parental, and vocational relationships, Paul points out that we should submit to one another in the church. We see that the Spirit leads us into community where practical acts of love are demonstrated in rela- relationships. Mm. And so it, it goes into submit in, in a good way. And right. he even goes on to say submit means to arrange under. Mm. It was used in the military to refer to subordination of soldiers in an army to those of superior rank. Good soldiers surrendered control, turning loose of their selfish agendas, living in submission for the good of all. And so like Jeff was saying, Brother Jeff was saying, if we are not careful, we will think of submit in a bad way. Right. And that's what the world and teaches that's what us. The world teaches, yeah. And that's why I say we got to be careful because the world teaches us. I mean, it's just like if it was, you know, a wrestling match mm. and and you made me submit, that right. means oh, I'm weaker. Right. Right? That means you have control over me. That's not what we're talking about. We're looking at submission in the biblical context. There we go. And submission does not mean the act of weakening. It means the act of surrendering. Right. That is a big That's difference a huge there. Difference. Yeah, it makes it, all the it, it does. It it is, it is a huge difference. And and the biblical submission that we're talking about is about the good of all. Yes, it's about the good of the family mm. in in general. Right. Um. And husbands, it starts with us first. Yes. It starts with with you and me with all, us. In as the role of the man, like we talked about yeah, last week, yeah. it starts with us. We are to surrender and submit to God first, mm. right? And then, like it said in the beginning there in verse 21, it said we submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wow. Now, wives, we got to be real. Again, looking at this and be real careful yes, yes. because I have heard people say that Paul was misogynistic, that he was that he didn't like women, you know, he, he picked on women. That is that is not the case. Right. That is not the case at all. He is not implying that a woman should submit to any man in general uh, or that a woman is inferior because she submits to her husband. Mm. But this is to bring about God uh, God's glory is to right. bring glory to God right. by being who He created us to be right. in the roles that He created us to be in. Right. That's what it's about. Yeah, because we, uh, as men, individually, are created to glorify God, mm-hmm. uh, just as you, as ladies, as women, are created to glorify God. And that doesn't change when He brings us together mm-hmm. uh, in a marriage relationship. You see, together, the same goal exists, and that right. is together... We are to glorify God, and we do that through the act of submission. And what's what's interesting, a lot of people don't realize this. So in this time, you know, you didn't just pull out, you know, a pen and some paper and start, you know, writing. It was it was expensive to write a letter, yes. to send a letter. That that kind of stuff was expensive to do. And when you did it, you normally only sent it to like the head of the household. You you wrote it to one person, that kind of deal. But Paul made it a point to promote women. Yeah. In this passage, yeah. he even he even gave more verses to women than necessarily the husband. Right. And and it's it was actually it would have made everybody step back and go, wow. Yeah. It was something that had to be read together. Right. You know. Yeah. It, it was something where like in the Jewish synagogues, uh, they had separated the men and women. Men would go and like kind of have their Bible study type deal. Women would have their own. But this was intended to be read together. Right. It was intended to be to be read as one because you know we got to remember what it says about in Genesis, about the man and the woman. And, and it's said by God, yeah. it says they became one flesh. Wow. They are one. That's right. One unit. Uh, when they come together, they complement each other. They, they are the ones that provide the strengths where the other one is weak. Mm. And so that's why the wife teams yeah. with her husbands, and yeah. they come together. They were created by God for this role. Yeah. Dr. David Jeremiah, he says... A husband who fails to properly love his wife makes it very difficult for her to submit to him. Mm. When a wife does not submit to her husband with respect, 
she makes it difficult for him to love her properly. This is in no way an excuse to act in disagreement with God's word. Mm. It's a result of sin and brokenness we see in our relationships because of sin. And in Colossians 3, uh, verses 18 through 19, this is, this is what it says. It says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Mm. And so we, we see this common theme when Paul's writing yeah. about this. Yeah. It, it is a, it's something that God created to come together, and it starts with him, yeah. right? Yeah. It starts with our personal relationship with God. Uh, and then with our relationships with, with man, woman, husband, wife, mm. um, if we don't repent and submit to God, then we, then we don't get authority, headship, and submission right in the family context, in the marriage context. Yeah. We can't do that unless God is, is at the beginning, unless right. he is at, unless we know how to submit to him first. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's a, a, a really neat way of, of when we look at it through Paul's writings. Right, right. Well, so many marriages, I believe, so many marriages today, they're doomed from the start because we don't understand or we don't embrace the biblical truth about a man, the biblical truth about a woman, and the biblical truth about marriage. I also believe that there is so much more room for growth. And just as there's so much more room for growth, there's a flip side of that. Mm -hmm. There's also much room for destruction. And I see another problem that we must encounter. And uh, this is personal. I I believe every man struggles in this, but I also believe that, that women can struggle in this. You see, many marriages today are built upon Selfish lust rather than sacrificial love. Mm. I know Proverbs 31 is a very popular passage of Scripture. I know many times uh, on Mother's Day or when we're honoring women, we go to Proverbs 31. But it is a beautiful passage of Scripture. And it's a very purposeful passage of Scripture. And so I want you to think about that. Many of our marriages today, they're built upon lust rather than love. I want you to hear what the writer of Proverbs says. Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 12 says this, A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Proverbs 31 goes on to say, In verses 25 and 26, she is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. And then if you move forward into verses 30 and 31, Proverbs 31 says, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. You see, I believe Proverbs 31 teaches us some valuable truths about the woman, about the wife, about the mother. You see, a woman will be the wife God created her to be by first fearing the Lord. That is where it starts, ladies. It starts by fearing the Lord. Be a woman who fears the Lord and you will be the wife that God calls you to be. I I know uh, for men and women equally, uh, we want to look good. You know, uh, now not for me, I'm not real worried about my hair, but, but we want our hair to be just right. We want our skin tone to be just right. We want our shapes to be just right. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, We're going to put our eyes on things that they don't need to be on. We're going to give value to our eyes rather than giving value to our hearts. And so I love what Proverbs 31 tells us. See, Proverbs 31 tells us a woman 
will be the wife God created her to be by possessing noble qualities. I love that word noble. You see that word noble, it means excellent or outstanding. And so God's word is clear in Proverbs 31. In this passage, what those excellent qualities are. Notice that those excellent qualities, it's not about the hair. It, it's not about the skin tone. It's not about what the eyes see. It's about the heart. You see, the noble qualities that are pointed out in Proverbs 31 are these qualities. She is a hard worker. She is a servant. She is hospitable. She is humble. She is strong. She is wise. And she is caring. That's what God's Word says. I believe a noble wife is devoted and obedient to God. And because she's devoted and obedient to God, she will be honored and praised by her family, her husband, her children, and really her community. Mm -hmm. And so men, we better be careful with our eyes. We better be careful with our eyes. If we are led by our eyes alone, we will be in trouble. We better make sure our hearts are right with God. And ladies, the same can be said for you as well. If charm is deceitful and beauty is fleeting, then it goes both ways. You see, lust won't last our eyes for long. And lust won't fill our hearts at all. Only, only sacrificial love will last. Only sacrificial love will fill mm -hmm. our hearts. And so we better get our minds right. All of us, yeah. men and women, husbands and wives, we better get our minds right. We better point our hearts in the right direction. I, I love this book that my wife Marty gave me to read. Uh, it's one that she recently taught to her Sunday school class. It's called Get Out of Your Head by the writer Jenny Allen. And I want to read a quote to you that Jenny Allen puts in her book. And it really speaks to what we're talking about right now. Jenny Allen says this, The greatest spiritual battle of our generation is being fought between our ears. And she's not talking about our eyes. She's talking about our mind. She says, what we believe and what we think about matters, and the enemy knows it. He is determined, listen, Satan is determined to get in your head and distract you from doing good and to sink you so deep that you feel helpless, overwhelmed, shut down, and incapable of rising to make a difference for the kingdom of God. What a powerful, powerful yeah. quote. Uh, this is an incredible book. I highly recommend it to you. Uh, just like we've been recommending Lead Me by Matt Hammond, I highly recommend this book, Get Out of Your Head by Jenny Allen. I'm about halfway through it now, and it is incredible. But, but ladies, <laughs> let me just say this. I'm exhausted for you. I'm <laughs> exhausted for you after discussing this. Uh, as men... We feel the weight of our calling, and I know you do as well. You feel the weight of your calling as a woman. You feel the weight of your calling as a wife. But I'm also thankful for you. I, I'm thankful for my wife that God gave me. I'm thankful for Marty. Uh, she is my complement. She is my helper. And in no way is she weaker than me or lesser than me. She is equal in God's sight. And the way God created her. And so I, I'm glad we've talked about the role of a wife. But Brother Andy, I want you to help us and I want you to answer this question. What is the role of a mother? Okay, so real quick before I get into the mother side of it. Uh, still kind of on the wife side of it. You know, I, as you read through Proverbs, and you talked about we read this at Mother's Day, uh, and this is read to the women, but men, I hope you were listening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. There's an old saying that goes like this, behind every good man is a great woman. Mm. And when you read Proverbs and you see all the things that the wife does to support and bless her husband through wisdom, through caring, these are qualities that, that your wives carry and they can be such a huge support for you. Yes. It makes me understand that 
I need her more than she needs me. Wow. You know, yeah. I, I do. I, in order to be a good man, I need a great wife behind me with wisdom and caring. And so that, that passage in Proverbs really touched me. It yeah. really opens my eyes to some things. And now we're going to get even deeper into your role as a mother. Uh, it goes so far beyond, like Brother Jeff said, it's exhausting to think about yeah how much you have, the responsibility that you have. But, ladies, you are blessed with something that we are not blessed with, and that is the ability to bear children. Wow. And, yeah. uh, you know, as a mother, as, as a man, that's something that we desire as offspring. We desire to have children, right. and you do too as a mother. And woman is blessed by God with the ability to bear children to her husband yeah. and to partner in the responsibilities of raising the family. That, that word partner is important, yeah. man. Yeah. I hope you're listening. It goes back to that team at work. I, yeah. I hope you're listening. Uh, it's not mama's job to correct them. Ooh. It is a yeah. partnership. It, right. is, it is the husband and the wife, the mother and the father mm. bear that responsibility. So let's look at a verse in, in Genesis chapter 1. Uh, Verses 27 and 28, here's what it says. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. After the fall in Genesis 3, God speaks to the woman. So let's look in Genesis 3, verse 16. To the woman, he said, I will make your pains in childbirth very severe. With painful labor, you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. So if we're not careful, we can take this passage negatively. Mm -hmm. So the fall in sin, it was absolutely devastating. And the consequences were severe, and we all have consequences from this. And, and we just read right there in chapter 3, verse 16, what the consequences for the woman were. Mm. And the two curses were given by God in Genesis 3, and one was the serpent, right. and one was on the ground. And I think that's important because, you know, when you look at the consequences of sin... That's different than the curses Curse of sin. Yeah. that yeah. God gave because of sin. And you make that very clear. Yeah. There were only two curses in that passage. Yeah. One was on the serpent and one was on the ground. So what does that mean for the men and the women? God didn't curse the man and the woman. There we go. Yeah. God did not curse the man and woman. He cursed the serpent and he cursed the ground. Mm. And, and they would suffer the consequences of their sin. Even right. though God did not curse the man and the woman, we still suffer the consequences That's right. of our sin. But He made a way for us to be who He created us to be. Mm. And God still held us accountable to those responsibilities that He gave as created beings. That's right. And He still blesses them. He's still blessing us right. every day. And yeah. ladies and men both alike... It, we, we will slip up. We're going to mess up and hurt each other's feelings or say things to one another that we truly don't mean. Right. But that's a part of the sin that was, yeah. that's the part of the consequences of our sin is we do not live in perfection. Well, and I think it's a, a point to be made too that, you know, because God set it out. He's, you know, he said, you know, wife, you'll long after your husband, your husband will rule over you. He wasn't saying that's the way it should be. Right. Yeah. He was saying, listen, that's because of sin, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Our goal is to get it back to the way it was, the, right. way the way God created, created it to that's be. Right. That's right. And, and therefore, the marriage, we become one again. Yeah. So, um, and, and as a mother, you know, mothers are created differently than fathers. Uh, mothers have more compassion and patience. I can tell you, I'm a very not so patient person. Yeah. And uh, I often have to. Get, I guess is get in trouble with by my wife. <laughs> I mean, it happens. Oh, yeah. she, it happens. she will it she happens. will fuss at me. Yep. She will fuss at me for my lack of patience or yeah. for uh, my not being as caring about certain things. And right. and again, that's one of my weaknesses. And she compliments me great on it. But but that said that said here says this: mothers are created to care for their children mm. and raise them up in the Lord. That's right. And we're going to look in Colossians chapter three, verse twenty. And it's going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, children, this is a responsibility for you. Mm -hmm. And it says this, Children, 
Obey your parents in the Lord in everything, for this pleases the Lord. That's right. And I know this is a verse that we're going to visit again when we speak of the children in this in this uh, Bible study. Uh, but we're going to look at the word parents, mm. and you notice it doesn't say parent. Right. It's plural. There you go. It says parents, both the father and the mother. So we're also going to look at the letters of Timothy. In the letters to Timothy. And in the letter of Titus, the mother is called and equipped with the ability to care and to raise her children in the Lord. Right. It's a responsibility she shares with the husband and father. Mm. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 31, uh, verse 15. It says this, She gets up while, uh, while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. And then verses 27 through 28 say this. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Mm. Mothers are created to watch over their household, and the family praises her for it. Wow. Mm-hmm. So husbands, do you praise your wife? Do you thank her for the many ways that she compliments all the things you do? For the things that she takes care of that never crossed your mind? Mm. Do you praise her for that? That That, gets me. That gets me. I do not. I do not do it like I should. And if you notice, though, it's teamwork that's making this work. Do you see the teamwork that's taking place in Proverbs 31? It's about the godly woman, but it's also about the family unit's success. Teamwork, God's glory. So the success of the family unit comes from that teamwork. Yeah. And wives, you play a very important role. Mothers, you play a very important role in that teamwork. And God, God's glory is poured out in all of these things. In, in the living, the way that we should, the yeah. way we were created mm-hmm. to live. And That's it's right. like Brother Jeremy just said, we have, because of sin... We have consequences to our sin, but our goal is to get it back to the perfection, to the way it was in the garden when they were helpmates. They worked as a team. The man was not over the woman, and the woman was not over the man. They were together. They were as one. So wives, mothers, this is our goal, to not only be husband and wife together, but to parent together, to be parents, to to do discipline together, to do all of the things in life, teaching our children in the Word and doing that together. Mm. Well, thank you, Brother Andy. Thank you, Brother Jeremy. Uh, I can honestly say uh, we've not exhausted God's Word on the role of the woman. We've not exhausted God's Word on the role of a wife, on the role of a mother, uh, even though I am exhausted in what we found so far. but I believe what we've done is we poured a foundation. We poured a foundation for both the man, biblically, and the woman, biblically, to be who God created them to be as individuals, but also to be who God created them to be together. And I just want to say this for, for one moment. You know, uh, none of us, uh, not any of us, uh, sitting here at this table, and, and really not any of you watching, whether you're a man or a woman, None of us are perfect. Uh, and you know what? We're not going to be perfect. Uh, Brother Andy just said it. We're, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to slip up and say things sometimes that we do mean to say and sometimes that we don't mean to say. Uh, and, and what we need is we need grace. Mm-hmm. We need mercy. Man, we need love. We need compassion. We need forgiveness. We need all of those things. And here's, here's the catch. Love, grace, mercy, forgiveness, kindness, compassion, none of that exists in and of ourselves. Mm -hmm. It only comes from God. And so like Brother Jeremy said earlier, if we don't get right with God personally, there's no way we'll be right with each other. And so... uh, One one thing I do want to say too is, uh, before you close, is teach this to your children. Yes. Something we were talking about earlier uh, was... 
uh, we were kind of going over this stuff, and he was like, you know, I don't, and nothing against my parents. I think they did a pretty pretty good job raising raising us. They did the uh, best. They, they did the best they could with what they had. <laughs> with what, what they, they had. had. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. But you know, I don't ever remember that time being sat down and saying, "Hey, this is what the role of a man is." You know, this is this is the role of a husband of a father. And if we're not careful, look, you know, I, I got to look at them to see how they interacted. Right. But I didn't get the necessarily the biblical definition like we're talking about. The intentional. The intentional, yeah. you know, speaking to about that. Uh, and when you, when you don't have that, you run the risk of listening to the world. Yeah. And seeing what TV and social media and those books have to say about it. So... Let us be intentional. Yeah. Let us be intentional we, about That's it. what we've got to do. We've got to be more intentional, uh, first and foremost, um, as a husband and a wife in our relationship mm, with each other. Absolutely. But then also as, a, as partners, as compliments, we've got to be intentional with our children. Uh, Brother Jeremy brought up a very good word when he was talking about submission. He brought up the word surrender. Yeah. And, and that's the word that I want to leave you with. See, here's what I believe. I believe our surrender to God it must be complete and it must be consistent if we truly want to bring Him glory in the family. We have to embrace God's design for the man and for the woman to truly enjoy the marriage relationship and to truly enjoy the family. Uh, we got to remember, it's not about my glory it's not about our glory. Right. It's about His glory. And so let's be vessels. Let's be funnels of God's glory in this world. I want to thank Brother Jeremy. I want to thank Brother Andy. Uh, again, I want to wipe my forehead and say, whew, man, that was hard. Got, got um, through this one. I was got a little through. nervous. I'm, I'm glad I had these guys with me. I don't believe I could have done this alone. Uh, I, I hope we've brought uh, I hope we brought something to you that, that, that matters, something that means something to you. Uh, again, if it's something that we've said in and of ourselves, just disregard that. Uh, go to the Bible. God's Word is very clear, uh, and God's Word is right. It is light. It is life. It is hope. And so take that and run with it. Next week, we're going to be looking at children. We're going to be looking at the role of a child in the family unit and what God's Word says about children and how they can glorify God by obeying their parents, by being in submission to God and to their parents. And so I hope you'll join us next Sunday evening at 5 p.m. as we continue this series, Family Matters. I hope you have a great evening.